Hello internet friends, welcome back once again, thank you for joining me today, and I want to get right into the topic. What we're going to talk about today is practicing your discipline and kind of taking the things that you want in your life and recognizing what you want right now because it's easy to attain what you want in this moment and and balancing that against what you want in the future and what you want down the road. And so a lot of the time, you're going to be faced with some challenges. We've been talking a lot about this recently, about the idea of kind of digging in and doing a little bit of suffering right now in order to open yourself up to success later down the road. But we've only really been covering it from one angle, this angle of putting yourself in some discomfort and kind of grinding through and doing things usually that are harder than you feel like doing. Coming in and doing the work day to day, the grind if you will, and staying on track and kind of giving up of yourself in terms of just the effort that you're putting in. But there is another side to that. There's the other part of the discipline. It's not just coming in and constantly beating yourself up or doing the things that you don't really feel like doing, sometimes it is holding yourself back from those other opportunities where you're feeling great and you just want to go after it and you want to just say, damn the torpedoes, full steam ahead, put your foot on the gas, you know, don't, you can't hold me back, I'm just gonna, I'm a horse darn it and I just need to gallop. And I was uh, experiencing that a little bit at the beginning of this week. Um, at this point we're in week eight of the programming I believe and Eric and Hanny we are we are full up into not the regular TSA athlete uh, generalized program so I'm completely off now um, from what the written program is and we're definitely full on customization mode here uh, we're basically continuing with the linear planning uh, for this week and adding in a little bit of extra volume on the core lifts in the form of potential plus sets, except they are not AMRAPs. That is something that Eric and Handy made very clear to me. These are not as many rep as possible sets. These are when you get to the end of your work, which is still supposed to be at or above the level of difficulty that things were last week, you have the opportunity to put on a rep or two uh, but nothing that you should miss, nothing that's even kind of flirting along that line, and I don't get to do anything fun like that with the deadlifts, which doesn't, uh, is not as exciting to me. I think that I'm definitely the kind of person who, uh, <laughs> it's funny, when the, when the work should be easy, that's when I'm grinding the most, but when it comes to the part where it's like, oh, time for a PR, and I'm going to have to pull you know, five or six extra reps out of somewhere that I didn't know that I could do? Oh yeah, sure, that's, you know, PR time, we're gonna go do this. And so, it definitely, at least so far this week, has been a real personal test for me of my own patience and my ability to say, okay, I'm gonna just do the work, I'm gonna stay within the parameters that were given to me, and I'm going to respect the process, I'm going to listen to the people who are uh, in charge of letting me know what my someone who can be objective about the situation and I've done this with my own athletes I, sometimes you go in you know you have occasionally where someone you need to push them really hard because they're not willing to kind of put themselves in that area where they're grinding in and, and gonna go through and do enough work uh, where they're overrating RPEs and stuff and then you have those other people who tend to kind of underrate things and and uh, not really be interested in pushing themselves on this plus set here, you're seeing I did 5.30 for my first five sets of three, and then on this last set, it was three plus a rep or two, and uh, I honestly felt like uh, it was a pretty decent set of five. Um, not perfect, definitely looks like I had done 15 reps beforehand, but uh, there's definitely no, no point in that set where I was like, I don't think I'm going to get this rep, or I don't think I could get a couple more reps. And uh, that's that's kind of the mentality that I was allowing myself to take of saying, all right, we're going to leave a few in there, we're going to trust the process, we're going to listen to the people who are supposed to be objective, those people who you gave control away to, and they're going to keep you from doing the silly stuff that puts you in a position of, uh, of, of getting caught out, I guess, and, and being a little overhyped and 
getting ahead of yourself because of your ego. And a lot of this, for me, has been learning to balance the ego, to push yourself to try and do more on the days when you don't feel like doing it, and make sure that you don't do too much on the days where you are feeling it. Uh, and sometimes it, it only takes one rep, it only takes one little misposition to throw yourself off, and that was something that I talked to Eric about after uh, the deadlifts that you're going to see, where um, I really wanted to do an AMRAP, and they both said, nope, don't do it, and Eric said, you know, we, we think you're in a good spot, and we want to keep the momentum going, and I absolutely agree with that. And here, right there, you see on this, uh, this plus set that I did for my bench pressing, I only added one rep, but it was weird. I went from what would have been like a 7 or an 8 RPE to instantly a 10 just because of one little positioning issue. Uh, my right scapula did slip off the bench a little bit, and so I touched a little too low, and anytime that happens, uh, it, it is just a game changer. And so it's one of those times where it's like, yeah, working within the parameters of what your plan is and when you have a strategy that you're trying to stick to, it's important to keep that in mind, and it's... Uh, if you're going to be using these kind of plus sets or AMRAPs, uh, if you don't have someone who can be objective, um, managing those for you and telling you when it's when it's appropriate and when it's a good time to do it, it's almost better just to put in the work and go through the planning that that you have and not really go off track a little bit just because you feel good. Uh, there's certain programming where it's really important that you don't. If, you, if you're feeling good on a day, to not do too much because it might mess you up. Maybe that's intentionally supposed to be a less intense day. Maybe that's supposed to leave you some room for recovery so that the next session you do, uh, you can get through something that's a little bit more of a higher stress day as opposed to the lower medium stress days that you're running into. So here you're going to see uh, the next training session. This was my uh, deadlifts, doubles. Four doubles at 665. This is 10 pounds up from the week prior, and I actually did these sets faster than I had the week prior. Uh, even the squats that you saw in that last workout, the five sets that I did, I did about 15 minutes faster than I did uh, in last week's, even though I was adding weight to the bar. I think that's definitely a good sign. It means my conditioning is slowly starting to come up a little bit, uh, kind of to match the um, refinding of some of these strengths, and in hindsight, some of these deads, I'm actually pretty darn happy with in terms of, uh, you know, I've, I've lifted more weight for more reps, but I don't recall too many times where I've been in kind of this range, especially on a stiff bar, and feeling as comfortable as I have here, and feeling like the technique was really as locked in. Um, even last week, I don't think that... Uh, I don't think that I was holding off the technique breakdown as well as I was holding it off in here. So that was the third set there. And the fourth set was the one where I really wanted to do uh, a plus set or an AMRAP. And it just always seems to go this way. Whenever you tell yourself, no, you have a cutoff, that's the set that feels the best. And so those first three sets, I'll rate those maybe at like an eight. Uh, where I feel like, you know, gun to my head or my family's in danger, I could have definitely pulled out a couple more reps, but right there I pulled that second one, and I'm like, oh, I could do this for five or six reps right now and chase some PRs, but it's not that time. It's definitely, uh, you got to respect the process. you got to trust the work that you're doing and say, am I in a good place right now? Do I need this? And in, in the grand scheme of things, of what I want right now, if I want in this moment a new potential PR as a rep set of 665 is that is that more important and is doing that going to better prepare me to get some of those higher goals that I have getting close to that 800 pound pull getting close to prepping myself for the best possible showing that I can put on at nationals which is a year away from now if I'm trying to get ready for that if that's the if that's the real goal Everything before that is kind of just small steps to it. And so I don't want to let myself, again, get caught out with some egotistical push where I'm not able to hold myself in check and do what I need to do in this moment to work, to get better, to set myself up better in the future when it really matters, especially with the way that I've uh, kind of structured what my goal set is for this training block and the future training blocks in the next 12 months. So moving on, we have this uh, 320 bench press five triples. It's crazy how much better the triples felt to me uh, 
compared to the sets of four that I was doing at 315 last week. I felt much more in control. The queuing is definitely uh, coming in much better. I've changed a lot of things about my bench press in this training block. I may even need to make a video talking about some of the things that I've been doing differently because it has absolutely changed my pressing almost 100%. It feels like a completely different movement. I feel so much better about it, and I'm really excited about the progress that all my lifts have done have gone through about the way that the training uh, kind of structure has been in terms of my approach to my own technique and kind of the self coaching I've been doing there has changed a bit and I'm really happy with that and about kind of some of the discipline PRs that I've been making recently uh, and just holding myself to some higher standards and I'm really excited to see what happens in the future um, I definitely don't think you should dwell in the area of saying like, oh, well, I have so much potential, this, you know, here's what I'm going to do in the future. But keep those things in mind and work really hard right now, but not past your means to prep yourself to have the best opportunity to make those goals happen in the future. Afterwards, you saw even that I did those, uh, those bent rows. I had a little more weight on there than I wanted to. The first two sets I did with 265, and I wasn't happy with the technique. I felt like I wasn't getting enough range of motion. I wasn't, uh, normally when I do my bent rows, I come up and I touch the belt, and that's kind of how I know I've hit the top of my range of motion. The second set of the uh, of the 265 that I had done there, I wasn't getting that full range of motion. I was stopping just a little bit shy, and so I took 10 pounds off the bar because kill the ego and watch the watch the lifts grow and, and really focus on improving every aspect of this, not just the weight that's on the bar like I've talked about recently. So thank you guys for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video. I, felt, I hope you found it informative or helpful uh, or kind of to put some clarity on some things you're going through, especially if you're one of my athletes and I'm kind of pulling the reins on you a little bit. Trust me, I know what that feels like because I'm doing it too. And uh, as much as my trust face was... Uh, made it look like I was unhappy with Eric and Hanny for, for kind of holding me back. I do appreciate having someone who's objective, who I can trust to make those decisions for me that aren't going to be uh, just controlled by their emotional state in that moment of saying, you know, where I'm going to just go, I want to get emotionally invested and I want to just keep going and, and do something for the right now, where they're able to look at it from a, a calmer perspective of saying, is this what you need? No, not right now stick to the plan and I absolutely respect that and for my athletes that's what I'm talking about too. So I hope you're all doing well wherever you're at and I will talk to you very soon. Have a great day.